Namaste. So now we're going to continue with Vichara Sangraham. The devotee has asked Ramana, why, even after hearing about Vichara, self-inquiry, why is my mind not even a little more peaceful than it was? I've heard from the guru, I've heard from the master. Now, why aren't I satisfied? And basically, Ramana said in the last verse, verse 20, it's because you have no mental discipline. You have to practice the yoga system from the beginning. Karma yoga, then bhakti yoga, raja yoga. Then only jnana yoga or self-inquiry becomes possible. So, now the devotee goes on to question him about the methods for controlling the mind. Devotee, of the means for mind control, which is the most important? Maharshi, breath control is the means for mind control. Verse 22. How is breath to be controlled? Maharshi. Breath can be controlled either by absolute retention of breath, kevala kumbhaka, or by regulation of breath, pranayama. Verse 23. Devotee, what is absolute retention of breath? Maharshi. It is making the vital air stay firmly in the heart, even without exhalation and inhalation. This is achieved through meditation on the vital principle, etc. And verse 24. What is regulation of breath? Maharshi. It is making the vital air stay firmly in the heart through exhalation inhalation and retention, according to the instructions given in the yoga texts. Well, this is very interesting. You see, Atma Vichara, or inquiry into the self, does not stand alone. It is not a technique that exists in isolation. But, indeed, it is the culmination of a long process of gradual control of the body and mind through breath. The yoga system exists for controlling the mind. Why? So that you can do Atma Vichara. Atma Vichara is the highest yoga principle. But it is not cheap. It is not a shortcut. You have to be qualified. And the way you become qualified is by controlling the mind through the yoga system as discussed in Patanjali Yoga Sutras and other similar works. So what are those means? Well, it's primarily control of the breath. Breath and mind are firmly interlinked. Just think of a time when the mind is firmly extroverted into the senses. For example, while running or playing some sport or other physical exercise. There is heavy breathing going on. The whole body is excited. And the mind is completely absorbed in the senses. Now, one cannot do Atma Vichara in this state. It should go without saying. Atma Vichara is for those whose mind is already somewhat controlled. 
And the means to do this is the yoga system, beginning with karma yoga. There is no shortcut. One must become qualified. Otherwise, his so-called atma vichara is just a farce. It's just a sham. It's just show bottle. Huh? My Adi Guru was an Ayurvedic pharmacist. And he used to talk about show bottle yoga. <laughs> what does this mean? When a pharmacist has a shop, he puts samples of this product in the window, in the display. But because these medicines are degraded by light, he doesn't put real medicine in the bottles. He only puts colored water. <laughs> so in the same way, trying to do Atma Vichara without the necessary qualification is show bottle yoga. <laughs> it's just a pose. It's a posture. It's an act. And you can fool yourself and you can fool others, but you won't get the result. The real result of Atma Vichara is complete transcendence of the mind, complete dissolution of the ego. Like we talked about last time, the salt doll dissolving in the sea. Or was that in the satsangam? I forget. But anyway, recently we discussed this example. It's an old story that after Ganesh Puja, the Ganesh uh, statues that are made of salt and painted all fancy with lacquers are brought to the sea and they're put into the sea. And so the story is the salt doll wanted to see how deep is the ocean. <laughs> well, of course, the salt doll is going to simply dissolve and there will not be any trace of it left because the salt in the doll and the salt of the ocean are the same. There's no difference in chemical composition huh? because the salt is made by evaporating seawater. <laughs> so, the fate of the salt doll is the same as the fate of the ego under authentic Atma Vichara. But instead we see people taking Atma Vichara very cheaply and basically doing show bottle techniques, sitting in the temple and all. I'll never forget, this was so funny. One time I was at a big Buddhist monastery in Sri Lanka and there was this one guy, you know, very nice looking guy, obviously wealthy and so on. And he's meditating in the temple courtyard inside of a pyramid shaped mosquito tent. <laughs> It was so obvious that he was just putting himself and everybody else on. He was just pretending to meditate. And really what he was doing was posing and thinking to himself, now everyone will see what a great yogi I am. <laughs> Instead, he simply exposed the fact that he's faking it. And similarly, in Tiruvannamalai, we saw many people coming spiritual tourists and trying to show off meditation in the temple and then going out in the parking lot and hitting on some girl <laughs> going out drinking with their buddies if they struck out <laughs> it's so pathetic but they could be real yogis if they would simply do the process. See, just like uh, Atma Vichara does not exist alone, also the breath control, Kumbhaka or Pranayama, 
do not exist alone. There are several techniques that support it. If you read Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, you find these techniques are Yama and Niyama. Then Asana. Now, most people who study yoga get all hung up on the asana phase. But in the whole Patanjali Yoga Sutras, the word asana is mentioned only twice. He does not consider it very important. But yama and niyama and pranayama are explained in detail. And what to speak of the Buddha's teaching? Yama and Niyama, what to do and what not to do, are given in the form of 127 rules. See? And in the Vedic yoga system, the very first principle of Yama, which is what to do, is you must accept a guru. You must. The, the imperative form of the verb is used, which means it's a requirement. It's not acceptable to skip it over. Without guru, you cannot understand. It's impossible. So even if you accept, let's say, Ramana as, as your guru and study his books, somehow or other, you have to link up yourself with an authentic practitioner, someone who is realized, someone who knows this art. And then what? Niyam, what not to do. Well, what not to do is all kinds of material sense gratification. <laughs> do not get mixed up with meat eating, sex, intoxication, and so forth. Now, why is that? Why are, for example, there are so many prohibitions around sex in spiritual life? Sex is a natural function and need of the body, and without it, one becomes neurotic and frustrated. But we also see that sex is the platform or the foundation of so many neurotic games that people play. So it's not so much sex that's harmful. It's all the games that go on around it. Uh, look at what people do. They buy expensive clothes and cars and go to nightclubs and get drunk or take drugs to what they think to enhance their attractiveness. Huh? All just for sex. Waste so much time and energy just preparing for it and finding someone. And then there's all these games. Who's going to be in control? Oh, it's just a mess. Best thing is to, to avoid it. But if you can't do that, at least get married. Keep it under control, yeah? put a limit on it. And then there's meat eating. Meat eating has terrible, heavy karma attached to it. I would go so far as to say, if you eat meat, you cannot realize spiritual truth. Certainly that was my experience. I got nowhere in yoga real yoga, until I stopped eating meat at age 16. And then I started to develop. So then what? Asana. Okay. Asana is simply stretching the legs and hips so that you can sit nicely. That's all. And, you know, if your back goes out of alignment, there are some means to restore it so you can sit comfortably. Why? For meditation. You have to be able to sit comfortably. The cross-legged position is best. 
You can sit in a chair, but it's just not the same thing. And then what? Pranayama. Huh? Prana means the vital airs, the life energy in the body. Beginning from the Muladhara chakra in the genitals and going up through the other chakras to the crown. This energy has to be enhanced and modulated and controlled. And this is done through pranayama. And here Ramana talks about kumbhaka, holding the breath, or modulating the breath through pranayama. Buddha also talks about anapanasati. Anapanasati means mindfulness of breath. Anapa is breath and sati is mindfulness. So if you observe your breathing, at first there may be some interference between your observation and your natural breath. But after some time what happens is the breath becomes very light, very soft and slow. And this is a sign that you're advancing. And finally you reach a point where you can suspend the breath. Some people prefer to suspend it in full exhalation and others in full inhalation. It's just a matter of taste. The point is to let the breath naturally calm down until it stops. And you will see at that point, the mind also stops. And since mind is the foundation of ego, at this point, one can look into it, see its source, and see how to turn it off. This is the highest yoga technique. And it takes some uh, work to qualify oneself for it. It's not cheap. It's not a shortcut. There is no shortcut. You have to earn it. That's the only way you can be successful and reach the highest stage of enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.